Hi, thank you all for uh, for having me here. And um, I'm sorry that Rob Ellsworth couldn't be here. He's the real expert in our office um, on this particular issue. But um, he trusted me enough to come and do my best to present the information we had um, and answer questions anybody has on that as, as well afterwards. Um, and thank you to the panel for having me with you. Um, Congressman Schuler got elected and his predecessor was voted out of office partly because the people of the 11th District of North Carolina felt as though their government had dropped the ball in a lot of ways. And one of those would be in enforcing immigration policy. We have, uh, we have lost a lot of our manufacturing jobs. Our big industries have been furniture and textiles, and those have fled for a variety of reasons over the past 10 or 15 years. Um, and what we have left is based on tourism and construction. And we have a lot of people who are already out of work, then seeing jobs or assuming that jobs, what little there were left, were going to people who weren't authorized to have those jobs. People that might not be held to the same standards, the same liabilities, the same taxation that they would. So they had a lot of, we had a lot of people from the get-go asking Congressman Schuller, please address this problem. Please look into this issue. He asked me to go to a briefing by the Department of Homeland Security, specifically done by, uh, Im by the Immigration and Customs Enforcement segment of the agency. And at the end of this presentation, I went up to the gentleman who had, um, had been fielding all of the questions regarding technology and advancement in documents and avoiding fraud. And I just, I asked him, I said, I understand we have this whole huge selection of tools. What is the one that's gonna help us make sure that we have correct work authorization? What is the one thing out of this whole plethora that you're showing us? He said, simple, E-Verify. I didn't even really have time to talk about it that much during the presentation, but I'm glad you asked, it's E-Verify. So I started looking into it more and more and actually realized that a lot of people in our district were already using E-Verify. And I actually spoke to some of these people. This is all public information. You sign a memorandum, memorandum of understanding um, saying that this information is going to be available to anybody that chooses to look at it. Um, I talked to some of the people that used the system. They loved it. They thought it was an excellent system. They said it was easy to use. It took the liability off of them. Whereas before, they were expected to know from a list of, I don't know, Rosemary, how many, 30 documents? 27 documents that could be acceptable when you're applying for a job. And they said, I don't, I don't know how to determine if this is accurate or factual, yet if it isn't, I could be on the hook. My livelihood, my business. So using E-Verify, no matter how it works, and it happens to work very well, but regardless, it takes me off the hook for something that the federal government should be doing anyway. So taking into account the needs of workers in the district and also employers in the district, the Congressman said, whenever we get around to uh, introducing our immigration bill, which was uh, in November of 2007, it's got to incorporate E-Verify. And it needs to incorporate E-Verify on a mandatory basis, and it needs to be nationwide. That's because these same employers we were talking to that said, I love E-Verify for this reason and that reason. Um, they also said that not everybody on my block is using E-Verify. I might have a carpentry shop, and a half mile away, my competitor, the only one in town, he's not using E-Verify. I don't know what he's paying his workers. I don't know if they're authorized to be working. I don't know, but I sure know that I'm being undercut. So if you have one person playing by the rules and volunteering to play by the rules, but others aren't, it's a very tough road to stay on if you are that one person using E-Verify. So it has to be level playing field. Um, and so the Congressman wanted to make sure that E-Verify got incorporated across the board and in a, in a way that would allow employers to implement this without becoming too much of a burden on them, beginning with federal agencies and federal contractors, which now will supposed to be, they're supposed to be using that anyway. Um, and then moving down gradually based on how many employees each uh, employer maintains um, over the span of four years. And then incorporating all current hires in addition to the new hires that the system currently allows employers to e-verify. Um, 
so far it's been a pretty successful um, attempt to encourage other members of the House of Representatives to go along with or to, to see the importance of E-Verify as evidenced by a recent vote to reauthorize um, the program. Uh, it's being held up a little bit in the Senate um, and we're hoping that that can be progressed through um, as quickly as possible. But um, no, we're hopeful. We have another uh, extension of E-Verify through the CRs where I mentioned um, and we'll be working to make sure that it gets uh, implemented and also that it gets improved. We had uh, Kathy and Jock Sharfin and uh, Lucia de Sabal from, from USCIS come into our office and they actually um, e-verified the congressman. He had loved this program uh, from the moment I told him about it, but when he actually saw how easy it was, it took seconds to put in his information and boom, there he was on the system. Um, he said, let's do it. I mean, we're." we're doing it, but I'm, I'm on board. That's when he actually started making phone calls. I think he called his wife shortly after that and said, honey, you will not believe what we just did. And then they said, Heath, this is what we've been doing. This is what, this is what CIS has been doing for forever. I think you have to see it to actually understand how simple it can be. So, um, you know, we're, we'll, we'll continue to, to work on it. The Congressman is not losing any steam on this whatsoever. Um, if anything, it's the opposite. So I think he's gonna try to maintain the lead on this issue. Um, and not drop the ball um, as has been done in the past. So, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Very good.